Hello and welcome, this is Lino Tadros and in this video I would like to bring in RAG operations into FlowWise. So far in the previous videos we have seen going directly against the LLM like GPT-40 or newer ones as well. But this time I would like to bring in a bunch of documents maybe, uh, do the embedding and vectorization and why is that a good idea to be able to do something like this and how easy it is to do it inside of FlowWise itself. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see from previous videos, I already have my chat OpenAI that is connected to my GPT-40 model in OpenAI. I have my conversation chain and I created my memory so I can keep track of all the conversation during the, uh, the chat history itself in the, in the chain. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and move all the stuff to the side. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And I'd like in this area in here to start working with my... Um, with my embedding and vectorization. Just remember, every time you bring in documents, there are four things that have to happen. The first one is the ingestion of the data. You have to bring in the data, whether it's PDF, Microsoft Word documents, uh, CSV files, Excel spreadsheet, whatever it is, we need to ingest it. And then we will do what we call the partition. The partition, I usually call it the Benihana effect, <laughs> which is the chunking and overlapping and cutting all that document into smaller pieces. Uh, getting it ready for embedding. And then the third one is the embedding itself, and that is uh, taking uh, every single chunk uh, that I divided the document in, and go ahead and translate that into a bunch of floats, uh, numbers, all right, so that I can actually represent that in a numeric way, make it much easier for a computer to be able to find similarities and so on. And then finally, the vectorization, which is saving whatever I came up with inside of a vectorization database, and there are tons of them out there and more of them are coming every day that you can uh, save this entire um, embedding that you have created for the entire document for each and every single chunk inside of the database. So later on, you can actually search against it as well. So let's go ahead and um, start doing uh, some embedding and vectorization. I need four things. So let's click on the plus sign. And the first thing in here, I'm going to look for the document loader. Notice there are a lot of different document loaders. I can bring it in from the internet, from Airtable, API loader. I can do crawling for websites, whether I want to use uh, crawling or, uh, or scraping, uh, two different things, but you can do both. Uh, for companies that have Confluence, you are more than welcome to uh, use them. CSV files, uh, Figma, which is awesome. Uh, GitHub repository, I can point to my GitHub repository and I can, I can use that for um, for RAG, um, Retrieval Augmented Generation inside of FlowWise itself. And there are tons of other things in here as well. You can even point to a specific file inside of an S3 bucket in, uh, in Amazon. Uh, AWS, or you can actually point to a directory that has a bunch of files that you would like to uh, to embed and vectorize as well. In my case in here, I'm going to go easy. I'm going to create a PDF file. So let's go ahead and, uh, and bring in a PDF file. Notice uh, it's asking for only one mandatory thing, which is to upload the file that you are interested in. So let's go ahead and upload one. And let me go ahead and bring this up on the screen in here. So I'm going to do this very simple. I have a, a file called pets.pdf on my machine, all right? And it's a very, very small file uh, just for testing, all right? It actually talks about uh, pets like dogs and uh, and cats and so on and why as a companionship and emotional support and uh, and all that good stuff inside of there. All right, so let me go ahead and, and upload this file. So we click on upload file right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and see where my pets are. Let me look for it. We'll say pets. Uh, hopefully we will. Uh, there it is. Pets.pdf. All right. There is nothing else I need, even though there is something that is uh, optional called text splitter. It's an important piece as well. If you do not choose to do text splitting, then the usage will happen automatically one document per page, or I can do one document per file. And for a small document like this, does not make sense. So I really want to use a text splitter so it does not uh, bring in the entire document in one page and we don't see actually the chunking because it will only be just one. So let's go back to the plus sign and I'm going to go back in here. Let me close this guy and we'll go all the way down to text splitters. And there are a lot of different text splitters in FlowWise. There is a character text splitter, code text splitters, markdown text splitters, recursive character text splitters, and token text splitters. It all depends on how... Um, the system is going to split up um, the different 
uh, amount of characters do you want to actually do a character text splitter say every 100 characters so it doesn't care where it is in the middle of a sentence it will stop right there at 100 characters for instance might not be the best way to do it if i say for instance recursive character text splitter it's a little bit better because it will actually stop till the end of the sentence or the end of the paragraphs to do something like this and so on and so forth all right token text splitter you can say because every four characters can make a token for instance you can say every 100 token i would like to stop every 50 token and so on so there is different ways and really there is no science to it there is art <laughs> so you'll have to try it out and see which one works best for the kind of document that you're uploading as well i'm going to do a recursive character splitter in here we'll bring it in and i'm going to move it here to the side and i'm going to say because this is a very very small document <laughs> to be honest with you so instead of a thousand i'm just going to make it a hundred and for the overlap that means i want you to repeat maybe let's say the last 20 characters um, in every single chunk uh, repeat it again in the next chunk so that we don't stop a, a meaning of a or, or a or an understanding inside of this document itself all right this is all i need to do and i just need to get my recursive in here to be my text player for that document okay i'm halfway through the other part is the embedding and the vectorization let's go ahead and click on the plus sign one more time let's find out where embedding is there it is and there are tons of different embedding models that you can use from AWS for Bedrock, for Azure OpenAI, go here. Uh, there are tons. Hugging Face have tons of free ones that you can use. Or you can actually bring it in from Olama, which is you can run this uh, without spending any money at all locally on your machine if you'd like. In my case in here, because I'm already using GPT-4.0, let's go ahead and bring in the OpenAI embedding right there. And notice, like it's, uh, it's chat open AI, it's requesting my uh, credentials. So I'm going to use the same one YouTube. Let's go ahead and bring this up. We created that in a previous video. And then I have different models that I can actually choose. I can have the ADA002, which actually consists of a 1536 different axes. Uh, these are the number of flows that will be created for each and every single chunk. I can use Embedded 3 Small. Uh, it's a better model, uh, maybe just a little bit more expensive, but it's also based on 1536. And then there is the Embedding 3 Large, which is 3,000 axes instead of 1536. It's a little bit more expensive. Um, you get to try it with different ones and see which one gives you the best uh, embedding and the fastest embedding, uh, probably, you can make a decision. I'm gonna keep it on the 002 and I'm pretty good, ready to go. All right, so right now, the only thing left for me is to actually decide on a vectorization database. Let's go ahead and click on the plus sign. And I'm going to go find out where my vector database is. I think I have one all the way at the bottom. Yep. Vector stores. There is Astra. There is Chroma DB. There is Elasticsearch. There is Feist. There is uh, Pinecone. You can choose whatever you would like. And there is more and more that will be coming up in here as well. PostgreSQL and, and other things as well. In my case, I'm going to go the cheap way, which is in-memory vector store. So I'm going to bring that in-memory in vector store in here. That means it will go away as soon as I shut down. And I'll have to run my vectorization again. But this is good for a demo. But remember, you can use whatever vectorization store that you'd like from any database that allows for this. Uh, these have a document and an embedding. So first of all, there is my PDF document. I'm going to bring it in to bring the document in here. And the embedding I already created. Let me go ahead and click on that and bring this in. Folks, this is it. These are the four things that are minimally needed for you to be able to, uh, to ingest, chunk, embed and vectorize a specific pdf or a multiple pdfs if you would like as well and it will be ready now i need to take that output the uh, memory retrieval or it could be a vector store if you chose that a vector store will do that in a different video as well because this is something you can do globally and flow wise as well but i need to bring this to something so i wonder what that something is going to be so notice in here in my conversation chain it does not have any input that will allow me to bring in my vector store that means there is probably a little bit uh, a change i need to do i will need to to bring in a different kind of chain that allow for question and answer and vectorization for retrieval so let me go ahead and delete this guy from here and let's go ahead and find a better one i'm going to go to the uh, chains right there and this is the one I used earlier, but there is another one called Conversation Retrieval QA Chain. It's very similar, except it allows the bringing in of other documents from a vector store if I want to. Great, let's go ahead and bring it in. It will have the same thing like before, so I will need to bring in the GPT-40 model right there. The memory, again, I'm going to bring in the memory like we did before. And then there is another thing that is mandatory, and that is the vector store retrieval. And this is our friend in here in memory vector store. 
I'm going to bring that right there. These are the only things that are mandatory to be able to bring in. Isn't that great? All right. Uh, later on, we will see how to bring in like content safety, for instance, using Azure Content Safety or, or content safety from any other provider to, so that you cannot actually ask questions or get responses regarding violence and self-harm and sexuality and stuff like that. Um, but I'm ready. Pretty much I can definitely run this. But there is a problem right now. If I save all of that and I run my chat, uh, well, this stuff takes time, right? What if it happens if you have like 30, 40 or 100 different documents that you'd like to uh, to vector, to vectorize and embed and so on? So as a matter of fact, Flowwise makes this extremely easy. Once you save this, something will show up right next to the chat button. Look what happens if I click on save. Oh, there is a button that shows up and that is the, what we call it the upsert for vector database. It means there is something that needs to happen for these four things to take place. So let me click on that green button first. And then it will tell you that there is a PDF file, there is some chunking that needs to, to take place, there is the open AI embedding that needs to take place, and then finally the saving into the vector store that needs to take place as well. And you can open each and every single one of them and see exactly what the values that we chose, 120 for the overlap. You can see what the PDF is coming from. So there is a lot of information that you can see in here as well. Not only that, but if you don't want to do everything like this in visual way, you can show the API so you can actually engage or start the entire vectorization process directly with, with API and it gives you the code in Python and JavaScript and in curl if you would like as well. It's great. All right, let's go ahead and do it. We'll say absurd. Now the Benihana effect is happening and it created 27 different chunks and it shows you all the different chunks and you can actually see more if you'd like but out of my very small document it's only like uh, one page for the pets. It found out out of a hundred um, uh, a hundred different uh, uh, characters, I actually ended up creating 27 different chunks. So at this point, it took each and every single one of these 27 different chunks and it embedded, it came up with um, uh, 27 different arrays of 1536 different floats. <laughs> Think about it this way, that represent each and every single one of these 27 different chunks. And at the end, it saved the whole thing into a database. In my case, it's an in-memory database in here for vectorization. That's how easy it happened right away. We'll say close. And now I can actually uh, say save and I can actually start a chat in here. And I can say, for instance, uh, uh, what are the benefits of um, owning a pet. All right, let's go ahead and uh, and see if the answers will come um, really well. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Let's give it another try in here to see what else we can do. All right, let's give it another Let's say, for instance, is training important for a dog? And let's see if it comes up with that. Says, yes, training is essential for a harmonious life with pets, particularly for dogs. It has blah, 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 blah. So it got that. But there is a problem in here. How can I find out if it got that answer for me from my document or from the GPT-40? Remember, GPT-40 is very, very powerful. Even if I didn't have all of that stuff, it will probably uh, can answer that question. Is training important for a dog? All right. Um, so there is a way for you to actually make sure that this is coming from what you expected. So let me copy this, uh, this line or this question in here. I'm going to go back in here. I will close this guy. And notice here for the conversation retrieval QA, there is something in here that I can turn on, which is called the resource, return resource documents. If I turn this on, that means I'm actually asking for citations. Citations means show me at the end which part of the document, uh, because you can have a lot of different documents. I want to find out which chunk in, ev in each uh, document that gave you the power to give me that answer. So I know that this is not a hallucination. It's not coming directly from the LLM. I just want to make sure this is coming directly from there. So I'm going to say save that. Let's open this back up again. And I'm going to answer this question one more time. Is training important for a dog? And notice it will come back in here, hopefully with the same answer. But there will be four different places, four different chunks that I can actually open. Notice if I click on one of them, it will tell you exactly where is it coming from. It's, it's coming from a PDF document, for instance, in here and how the document was, uh, was written and so on and so forth. So I can open up all the different uh, pieces where this is 
coming from. That is important if you're actually working for an organization that, uh, like let's say banking or financial systems or medical, when you ask questions, it's important for us to cite the citations and be able to say like, I answered that way because, and these are the documents or the chunk of the documents that actually proves that my answer is correct kind of things. Hopefully that was easy enough, uh, took a few minutes to create this, but hopefully this was uh, useful to you. And, um, and I'll see you again soon in, a, in another video. And if you like it, please do uh, like the video and subscribe if you'd like. And uh, so you can be notified with, uh, with new videos coming up in the future. Thank you so much.